Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Monday, September 13th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But, and listen carefully here, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, you know, it's my belief that sometimes good people can have really bad nights. What I want people to do is I want them to revisit Oscar Valdez's recent fight against Robeson Conceso. Right? It's very important that you do because this is one of those moments where, in my opinion, without naming names, several people, including the referee, had very bad nights. In my opinion, the end result was that a guy who fought a fight that is one of the best performances of the year. A performance that I consider a masterpiece. He made an unbeaten champion look extremely limited. Right? It should have been obvious to everyone. And the fight was in the backyard of the champ, Oscar Valdez. It should have been obvious to everyone in the arena that Valdez needed a stoppage to win the fight. It should have been painfully obvious. But boxing has some Jedi mind trick thing going. If a fighter is viewed as a good guy, right? Not a Ricardo Mayorga, right? Not a guy who has had some problems. Not a Mike Tyson in his prime. When Tyson got himself in trouble a few times. Right, no, when the guy is viewed as the kind of champ that you could, you know, introduce your six-year-old to, right? The kind of champ where you want that guy to sign a facsimile boxing glove so you can put it on your mantle and say, hey, I met this guy once. We bend over backwards for him. Especially when the guy has fought courageously in the past and is now doing a homecoming in front of his fans. Now we'll overlook the failed drug tests, which is dismal. Worse, we'll overlook the sanctioning body, allowing him to fight anyway after failing the A and B sample. You tell me though, at what point is looking the other way too much. Now what I need for you to do, and I'm serious about this because they're going to tell you if you don't do this, that what you're seeing, you're not seeing. Right? They're going to confuse things for you. I don't believe anyone's nefarious. I think it's a group dynamic. The crowd obviously believes in Oscar Valdez. For some reason that seems to have duped the announcing team here. The announcing team has Hall of Famers on it. What you need to do for this fight in my opinion and I'm here trying to talk to the boxing hardcore because this fight is a must watch not just for boxing but just to understand how eyewitness testimony could be so out of it. Just to understand how group dynamics are such that sometimes the group is going to tell someone, hey, you didn't see what you think you saw, right? Richard Jewell, right? If you're a Kennedy assassination buff, Arnold Rowland, right? People will come out of the woodwork and say, hey, your story can't be true. You didn't see what you think you saw. So what I need for people to do is to watch this fight. Again, it's Oscar Valdez against Robeson Conceso. 
right? Watch this fight. Kill the volume. Get the announcers out the room. Right? Just get the announcers out of the room. When they flash scoring on the screen, look away. I'm serious about this. I think some good guys in the announcing booth had really bad nights. Right? What you might even want to do is to kill the volume completely. Don't even listen to the crowd because the crowd is cheering for the local guy. Right? That's their focus. It's not on who's actually winning the fight. So let's do something here that I'm not sure the actual scoring of the fight suggests. Let me just boldly say here that I believe Robeson Canseco can, can say so. Undressed the champion. Threw down a masterpiece. Let's talk about my scorecard. Now, truth be known, I didn't see this fight until after it took place. So I'm scoring the fight, and I thought, okay, you know, sometimes the official scorecards and my scorecard aren't really on the same page, but they're within range. In other words, I'll look, I'll say, well, you know, they had it two more rounds a certain way. Okay, I'll live with that. That's not the case here. This is a disgrace. Boxing should be ashamed of itself. Right? One person saw the fight I saw. Robeson can say so. He clearly thought he was winning the fight going away. What do I mean? Let me tell you my scorecard. I gave the first round to can say so. I gave the second round to can say so. I gave the third round to can say so. I gave the fourth round to can say so. I gave the fifth round to can say so what I want people to do is to look at the end of the fifth round. Can say so is in such control that he starts mocking the unbeaten champion. Folks, it's a shutout after the first five rounds. It's not close. Can say so is throwing jabs. When Valdez tries to remove the cushion between the two of them, because Canseso is a little bit taller, Canseso then starts throwing wicked counters to the body. Now Valdez has a great left hook. When he throws it, Canseso blocks it. He lets it land on his guard. Right? His movement is destabilizing Valdez the whole way through. Valdez cannot land two meaningful punches in a round. At one point, Canseso has landed over 90 punches to 47 from Valdez. Valdez is getting systematically dismantled. Now, rather than make excuses for the guy, Rather than tell us about his other fights, how, oh, he's a warrior, he comes back, why not tell us about what's happening in this fight? In this fight, he's getting undressed. So the first round that Valdez wins, and this is in a fight where Canelo's in the house, right? You understand that Valdez has the big promoter. Valdez has... Eddie Reynoso as his trainer. Canelo's trainer. One of the best trainers in the sport. Valdez has Canelo taking time off from his preparation against Caleb Plant to actually travel to Tucson. Right. Let me also say too, Arizona has a very rich boxing culture going back to when I was a kid. I remember Danny Little Red Lopez. If you remember this guy. Today, you have David Benavides, one of the sport's best fighters coming from that area. Right? I believe Michael Carbajal is from that area. 
these fans should have known better. Understand in fight towns like Philly, fight towns like New York City, if the local guy, the big betting favorite, is getting undressed, there comes a time in the fight when the crowd starts to celebrate the performance. Well, after Valdez wins the sixth round, we get to the seventh round, folks. That's Consesos. We get to the eighth round. That's Consesos. I'm just telling you my scorecard. We get to the ninth round. The referee, without warning, docks Conceso a point for hitting Valdez behind the head. Even with the docked point, that ninth round, in my opinion, should be scored 9-9. Right, 9-9. Now, I gave Valdez the 10th round, but understand, now you're looking at the 11th and 12th, and you're thinking, wow, Valdez is going to have to either get a stoppage, or he's going to have to knock this guy down multiple times. Right? I thought, okay, going into the 11th round, Valdez needs a stoppage or he needs at least a 10-7 round to have a decision be even plausible. Folks, I wish I could tell you Valdez was doing more. He is destabilized by the movement. Right? I... I have no idea what the judges were thinking. I have no idea what the announcers are thinking. What I do believe is that all of us, all of us, this is obviously emotional here, all of us have to think for ourselves. So you get to the 11th round, and folks, the 11th round is one of Conceso's best rounds of the fight. It's an exclamation point. This is the guy who has taken your title on the scorecards, who then has a round who says, player, I just want you to know that beating you is not enough. I'm here beating you with a margin. Right? Twelfth round, take out a coin and flip it. Does it really matter? I thought the fight was so lopsided that I thought, look, you know, <laughs> unless, unless I saw something odd that should get the challenger disqualified, right? Unless the challenger got knocked out cold, there was simply no way that the favorite, the champion, had won this fight. Now, I had no bet on this fight. I did not make a pre-fight video. But let's just say the more I watched the fight, the more upsetting it was. Put differently, folks, this is one of the most egregious robberies I have seen in all the years that I have watched boxing. Let me go one step further. I didn't even know the fight was like this. In other words, I heard Valdez won. I saw a picture of Valdez, and he looked spent. Right? His face looked worked over. And so at that point, I thought, okay, well, let me... To my surprise, Valdez got mauled. He got completely taught the sport. I mean, folks, it's rare that you see a guy as highly thought of as Valdez diminished like this. Folks, he, even with the point deduction, lost the fight by a wide margin. Right, on my scorecard, and I'm not trying to be dramatic or controversial, 
I want you to watch the fight, folks. It's in my favorites folder right now on YouTube. All I'm asking you to do is to kill the volume. Right to my utter amazement, in a fight where I gave Valdez two rounds. Okay, let's be charitable. I'll give him the 12th round. In a fight where I had the challenger winning at least eight rounds, somehow none of the judges gave the challenger the fight. What I want people to do, and I'm serious about this, is to look at the punch stats. Let me also say too that on the telecast, and it's shocking, you have guys criticizing the challenger for his movement. Movement that would make Ali proud. Right? At different times, he's moving around the ring. Valdez jumps in, he hits Valdez with a few jabs, then he gets back moving. Valdez comes in, misses some shots. Conceso then looks away to let you know, hey, this guy can't hit me. Right? Billy Joe Saunders understands what this guy was doing. Right? Anyone who understands that the sport has a back foot understands what this guy was doing. Folks, flat out, he won the fight by several rounds. He embarrassed Valdez to the point where if there's a mover in the division, let's say Shakur Stevenson, this fight is the blueprint. It's the blueprint if you can move if you have rhythm on how to beat Valdez. So I get it. He's a popular guy. I get it. He's a role model. I get it. He's courageous. What Valdez isn't, in my opinion, is the champ in his weight class. The guy who just beat him, who they robbed, should get the belt. What's even more stunning is I didn't even hear an outcry before I watched this fight of people demanding that they run this fight back. Right? Let me just say too that, you know, here online I'll say, yeah, Manny Pacquiao, Canelo, Joshua, they enter the ring with a two round advantage. Here, the only way Valdez could have won this fight is if he entered the ring with a five-round advantage. Right, folks, he lost. Look at the challenger in the 12th round. He's waving his hand. He's looking at the crowd. He thinks the judges are going to judge the fight he believes he fought, the fight I know he fought. That didn't happen. That simply did not happen. Let me hear your thoughts, because I'm sure there must be some other side of the equation here. Right? I'm not kidding myself. I understand, okay, if I walk into a crowded room in Tucson and I start talking about a robbery in this Oscar Valdez fight, many people are going to think I'm nuts. They're going to treat me like I'm Richard Jewell. Right? You're going to say, nah, nah, that, that couldn't happen. Right? In boxing, unfortunately, sometimes you have situations like this. Where you see a fight and you're like, oh, I saw the Lennox Lewis, the Vanda Holyfield fight. And I thought, good win for Lennox Lewis. I had money on Lennox Lewis. Then they announced the scoring and they called it a draw. <laughs> Let's just say that the casino had my money. Let's just say that I still don't know what fight the judges saw. Well, I'll never know what fight these judges saw. I'll never figure out what fight the announcer saw. 
right? This was a wide margin win. I can say so. He should be the champion, right? Let's hope that there's justice out there and the sanctioning body realizes that, number one, they can't allow guys to fail the A and B sample and then fight. Number two, the guy who was able to enter the ring, having failed both samples, shouldn't be given a fight the way Valdez was given this fight. Folks, just look at the guys after the match. Right? Valdez's face is all marked up for good reason. He's been fed a steady diet of jabs. He's been hit with major counters. His left hook was blocked throughout the match. There are no knockdowns in the fight. Right? No knockdowns. He's undressed. He could not handle the movement. He could not handle the volume. He couldn't handle the timing. Right? The challenger is hitting him with body shot counters repeatedly. Think about the timing that takes since Valdez is supposed to be a power puncher. To quote Tony Bruno, this is an outrage. Let me know your scorecard. Let me know if I'm just crazy. Let me know how you saw the fight in the comment section of this video. And if you haven't seen the fight, please kill the volume, sit down and watch the fight because then you're going to wonder how all three judges had the scores they had then for entertainment purposes only rewatch the fight with the volume and ask yourself right looking at your notes on the fight when you watched it without the volume what fight are these announcers watching why isn't there an outcry how could this happen in 2021 Let's just say there's a movie out there, The Hurricane, starring Denzel Washington. And in the movie, and it's fictional, Denzel Washington fights the champ, beats the daylights out of him, then they come back with the decision, and they give it to the other guy. Right? Folks, the Denzel Washington fight in that movie is more competitive than the fight here. Right, let's just say, honestly, I, as I was scoring this, we got to like the eighth round and I thought, well, clearly Valdez must have thrown some serious leather in these last four rounds. I thought clearly Valdez must have done something significant in the last four rounds to take control of this fight. Never happened. If you saw the fight and you didn't see Valdez win, don't let anybody, including me, tell you otherwise. Think for yourself. Believe your own two eyes. Write down this opponent who won a gold medal. Write down this opponent's name. Because he's the champ. The de facto champ. In Valdez's weight class. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.